Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing for lots more diamond painting content. And if you are back, welcome back. Today I'm here with my weekly whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress, if you're new. <laughs> and chat stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me. This evening I'm actually going to be doing a kit up and chat. And kitting up is a term that uh, diamond painters, a lot of diamond painters use to refer to the process of getting a diamond painting ready to actually work on. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of prep that can go into it depending on what you'd like to do. And uh, I'm gonna be taking the diamonds from this kit and putting them into my storage containers. So um, this is a an old master's kit. It's called The Dance Class, and it's by the artist Degas. And I actually picked this up last summer from Michael's, which is a crafting store here in the States. They have this Make Market brand that um, it, it was seasonal. There may still be parts of it that are seasonal where they change things out. This is from summer of 2022 and it's just been in my stash since last summer. I didn't have the chance to work on it for um, the, the, I'm doing this for an event that I co-host actually. Uh, I didn't have the chance to work on it last year for a summer with the masters, but I would really like to get to it this summer, particularly because Michaels has switched over all of their diamond painting offerings to their in-house make market brand. So I thought, let's go ahead and give this a try just to see what we think of how it turns out, what the quality is and whatnot. I knew I wanted to work on it this summer. So um, uh, Summer with the Masters is an event that I am co-hosting for the third year. And this summer I'm hosting with my friend Anthony from Single and Policing. It runs through the end of July, so there's still time to jump in if you like. I'll be sure to link to the playlist for the event in the description box below. Check out the announcement video to find out more about what it's about. And our weekly videos that are still kind of going strong, I'll have the week four video up. Wait, no, no, no. It'll be week five, my bad, <laughs> this this upcoming weekend. Um, we're doing weekly giveaways. We have to partner with some really cool small shops. So if the artwork's your jam, feel free to jump in. So. Um, I decided that I was really gonna try to help myself branch out a little bit. I'm gonna be working with a different set of storage containers. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how many colors, because I don't remember off the top of my head how many colors are in this kit. And I'm either gonna use this set, which this is the, oh, I'm blanking on the name. I'll have it linked below, because you can get these on Amazon. Um, this one, though, is the Cottage Mills Dot Box set. It's on the tip of my tongue. I may randomly remember the name of this one. Then this one's the Cottage Mills dot box set and has a variety of different sizes. And then there's this one. So um, you may have seen, if you watched a kitting up video that I did recently uh, of a kit called Outside the Sweet Shop. It has a lot of colors. I originally had challenged myself to try to branch out and not use my go-to storage system for diamonds, which is the Elizabeth Ward storage set here. I have a set here because I, I was working on my diamond painting earlier. Um, this is the Elizabeth Ward set. <laughs> um, I, I failed at branching out from those for that kit. So I thought, okay, this next kit is small enough. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try branching out. <laughs> so, um, it didn't come with a sticker sheet or anything. It just has this bag of diamonds and and then it has the legend on the canvas. So there's no DMC code. So I think what I'm gonna do is, okay, there's a couple of ways you could tackle something like this. If you get a kit that does not come with a sticker sheet, which is often the case with a budget, you know, a budget friendly kit. Sometimes that's just not something that's included because it helps cut costs to not. Um, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, so you can do what I'm going to do, which is not what I recommend for larger projects. This, again, this one's small enough, I don't mind. Um, I am just gonna use these labels and I'm just going to try to replicate this symbol. <laughs> I'm just gonna draw it with a pen. Alternatively, you could take a picture of this or scan it if you have a scanner and print out a piece of paper or photo sticker paper if you have that, um, and then and then turn it into labels if you just use regular paper. I have a Xyron sticker maker. Um, I'll have it linked below. I think everything will be under an Amazon uh, um, set of links, but uh, that's what I use if I wanna turn paper into sticker labels. So you could do that. 
Um, and it would, you know, then you'd see the actual symbol a little bit more closely. But I think I'm just gonna live life on the wild side and, <laughs> and just, I'll, I'll probably put the serial number on it and then draw the symbol. So we've got 34 colors. How many, how many boxes are in here? It might be a little dicey because what if some of these don't fit? Okay, so there's two sizes of box in here. There's the bigger one and the smaller one. So we got two, four, six, eight, 16, um, 32, 34. Okay, so we have 34 of the bigger ones and then a bunch of the smaller ones. Should I try it with these? I don't know if any of these will be big enough they need to spill over, but I can always I can always write on two if I need to. Let's try this one. I have not used this storage system in ages. We'll go with this one. The upside to using, I have used a dot, this Cottage Mills dot box one <laughs> relatively recently, uh, but the upside if you use this one is that you get a variety of different sizes. Look at that random spare drill in there. So that is nice about the dot box system. Um, this one's a little more spendy, I think. This one was pretty budget friendly. What the heck was the name of this one? It'll be in the description box, don't worry. <laughs> you could take a look there. Okay, so the other fun, I say with sarcasm, hold on. The other fun, not fun thing about these is that they don't have any DMC code on them. This number, okay, so this number right here, 18, corresponds with 18 here. And then this just matches the serial number on the canvas. Good news is they're in order, so I can just find the number. Let's see. Okay, so that must be the last strand. Okay, so I can just find the number one and go from there. Oh, you know what? Oh, I don't see any static. I'll go grab dryer sheets if we run into static. Um, these might be static free. That would be wonderful if they were. I, You know what? I see little holes have been poked in. I don't know if that's really gonna show up on camera. It looks like they've poked holes in these bags. I feel like companies, manufacturers will do that to reduce static, so. Anyway, honestly, don't judge my chicken scratch too harshly, okay? <laughs> I feel a little bad because I just did a small shop haul last weekend and I was actually really excited to get to um, dive in and try out some of those tools with you because I had a couple of new to me shops in there I was excited to try out. Um, but next week, next week, because here's the thing. The only the only projects I have going at the moment are um, uh, my outside the sweet shop, which I worked on with you guys in the whip and chat last week and um, my cross stitch conversion, which I'm not really in the mood to work on my cross stitch conversion right now. So that's why I'm foregoing that one. And since I worked on outside the sweet shop with you guys last week, and it's a little tricky for me to work on that one with this kind of overhead light situation, I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll kit up this kit because I did want to start it before the end of the month if I could. <laughs> so uh, I hope that's okay. Oops. I hope that's okay with you guys. I hope that's all right. So hi, how is your Monday so far? I hope it is off to a wonderful start. Um, it is, it's Sunday night as I'm filming this. Ooh, and that's really nice, you guys. The labels fit really well right like that. So we'll see how this goes. This may go really quick. <laughs> I have to try to like buy some time here. Okay, I bet that is 310. Um, I did drop one there. So one thing that I, I do have to watch out for with these storage containers, and if I were working on a bigger project, I would be more annoyed about this, but um, it buckles a little bit. You can see the lid buckles there, and diamonds would probably, yeah, no, like a little diamond just fell out. Am I gonna regret using these? We're gonna try it, you guys, we're gonna try it. I wonder if, I mean, I could tape it, but then it's like I wouldn't be able to easily open it again. Okay, well, since they're gonna sit upright like this, maybe it'll be okay. We'll try it and see. Some aren't, some are fine though. Anyway, I think that's one of the reasons that I don't gravitate towards these as much. You know, um, I only originally really discovered these because Dazzle Driller on Instagram, which she hasn't posted in a long time. I hope she's doing okay. Um, Dazzle Driller on Instagram, um, she was, really one of the like biggest presences on Instagram when I started diamond painting three years ago. And um, 
she was a big fan of these uh, of these containers i think she had found them at ross or something similar so um two and this is a downward arrow okay uh, I had a couple of friends, a couple of diamond painting friends over last week, and I was showing them this canvas. And in the unboxing for this canvas, I was saying that I wasn't totally sure what I thought the parent manufacturer was, but both those gals agreed that they definitely think it's it's just diamond dots, but under a different brand name. And that makes sense to me. I don't remember if I speculated as much in that video, but there's something about this like 100% polyester style of of canvas that it's like diamond dots and dreamer designs use it i actually have a theory and i don't know if it's still the case because i know dreamer designs has made a lot of updates but i think that diamond dots and dreamer designs either do or they did share the same manufacturer because they have some similar stuff going on with their symbols their canvases look really incredibly similar um, and there were a few other things but to be honest the canvas material is not really my favorite but I have to say that I am willing to let a whole lot slide because this kit was $14.99 US dollars before any store coupons. And that is dirt cheap. That is so incredibly cheap. So I am not gonna sit here and be super picky about the material quality, uh, but I'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> so, uh, have any of you guys worked on a Make Market brand kit? If you, I think if you live in the States, so I don't think Michael's is an international chain. Um, but I will say one of the things that makes me think it's not Diamond Dots is there's like no static. And Diamond Dots for a while was known for having horrific static. Um, but yeah, my initial thoughts about this kit, I'm curious, I'm intrigued. I wanna know how this is gonna turn out with the rendering, oh, the symbol printing with like the red print. Um, Christiane pointed out to me, she's like, that's just like woman in gold's printing. And I was like, you are completely right. <laughs> so now I'm completely sold on the thought that like, oh, this is probably parent company Diamond Dots, so. I'm really interested in things like the what goes on in the manufacturing process of diamond paintings. I just, I love trying to figure out how things work and understand how things work. But um, I finished, by the way, I finished my first summer with a master's kit a few days ago, which was my custom of um, Psyche entering Cupid's garden. And I, as I finished that kit and just been sitting on it a little bit, I kind of was thinking that it could be fun for maybe, because I haven't decided what I want my last week of Summer with the Masters content topic to be. I already know this upcoming weekend I want to do my walkthrough of the Getty Center Museum, which I loved doing. I have so much footage. I should start editing that together ASAP because that is going to be a really big project to to take on to sort that all through and figure out how exactly I want to present it all to you. I'm really, really looking forward to sharing it with you though, because it was a really neat experience and one that I enjoyed so much more because I feel like I've gained such a greater appreciation for artwork in general. Um, thanks to Summer with the Masters. So I was thinking that it could be fun for one of the, well, one of the ideas now that I'm kicking around for my last week of Summer with the Masters content is to do um, a deep dive on like the story behind Psyche Anna and Cupid's Garden. Um, and maybe I should have this kit finished by then. Um, maybe this one as well, depending on how long I feel like that would go for. I also would love your guys's that's not correct grammar, is it? I'd love your input because I have a little bit of a dilemma for what I would like to do as far as projects go for Summer with the Masters for the rest of the month. So I have two things that I'm kind of kicking around. Um, one, for a project to work on after I finish this one, because like I mentioned, this one's pretty small. I think it'll go pretty quickly. Um, and then I'll still have some time throughout a good part of the month of July, most of the month of July, I'd like to work on one more project, Summer with the Masters related. 
So here are my options. One is the paint gem set that I just unboxed that is the, I think the museum edition is what it's called. And it's all these little miniature, I think it's a set of 10 or 12, um, miniature old masters little like pieces <laughs> and I think it's just so cute that they're these tiny 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 forms like the Mona Lisa is one of them and has just like one black dot each for the eyes and it's like you don't go into that thinking you're going to get this spectacular rendering or anything like that but it's just a really different approach to the the genre and could be really fun so there's that or and this comes from a place of just kind of having a lot in my stash and not necessarily wanting to let the summer pass without the opportunity of taking advantage of the opportunity to work on more on theme canvases. Um, that looks like an N. Let's make this more like an obvious triangle. There we go. Um, or hat. <laughs> uh, so my other options, so there's the paint gem mini set or I have a couple of kits in mind. I haven't worked on a Distracted by Diamonds Old Masters kit and I would really like to, especially in honor of her kind of um, really bringing that artwork sort of to the forefront in the community. Like she was, I think, one of the very first shops to carry some old masters artwork besides Starry Night. And I have Zodiac by Alphonse Mucha and, and Primrose by Alphonse Mucha. It's a larger panel, both in my stash. And I think that if I did one of those two, it would probably be Primrose because it's round diamonds. And I've had so many square drill kits in my life at uh, this event. So what would you guys be interested to see? The Paint Gem mini set or the Mooka Primrose panel. I'm curious if anyone has any strong feelings. So uh, yeah, I'm just debating what I want to do in July. <laughs> and I've still got that, that big kit from Diamond Art Studio UK going, which I, just a little update on that, even though I'm not working on it with you guys today, I am very happy to report that I feel like I have gotten through the learning curve of that kit and now it's going a lot faster. <laughs> um, now that I'm, ooh, there's two bags of this color. Okay, let's see. I don't know if they'll both fit. Um, where I recognize the symbols well now, I have a sense for like where they are in the trays and it just, it has sped up quite a bit, which is nice. I think I can fit both bags in there. Um, so happy to report that that kit is now moving along at a little bit faster pace, but it'll still take me some time. And I, I don't want to just work on that one and neglect my old master's kits, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, there are a few symbols, a few sets of symbols that are very similar to one another. Um, and that's one of the only things that I'll try to make sure I point out to be like, FYI, just watch out for these ones. Um, but it, it, the printing on the canvas is so clear that it's not, not a huge deal, thankfully. Um, I also was really excited to, oh, before I move on though. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying working on that kit. I know a lot of people are wondering if and when it's going to be restocked. And the good news is yes, their, their restock order has already been placed. <laughs> it is, um, it's on order. It's just, it's gonna take a little bit to get in their hands and I think it's it is going to be really popular once it's in and they and they restock it. But I think they're anticipating end of July, maybe August. Best suggestion that I have is to follow them on their social media to stay up to date with when their restock happens. And in the meantime, they've still been releasing a lot of really gorgeous kits um, from the same artist, actually, and a lot of other artists as well. So. And I've been really happy with the quality so far to the point that I would happily place another order. So I just am trying to be intentional about budgeting <laughs> and and that and trying out a variety of shops and stuff like that. So um, number 10 is up next. We've got two bags for that one too. I think this might be one of these background green colors actually. I really like that. It's like almost a sagey green. Um, See, my drawing isn't too terrible and they're all lining up nicely. I don't think we'll even use any of these middle ones. Somewhere, it also came with a set of these really long ones, like large long ones that take up like this, like the space of three of these. Those are somewhere. <laughs> Those are somewhere in one of the baskets of storage because I, I had to Frankenstein my storage situation at one point. 
Um, so stuff just got a little bit mixed up, which drives my organized brain a little crazy. But one of these days I will go out and clean up and organize my garage and it will make make a little bit more sense out there. But anyway, yes, so only good things to report on my outside the sweet shop 197 color kit. It's it's really, really neat because I'm weird and I like the, the challenge for my brain. It is fun to be back to a really high color count kit. Um, taps into a different part of the brain. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, that was a bigger bag. So let's see. I think what I'll end up doing is we'll do 10 in two of these big ones and we'll start being able to spill over some of these smaller bags into some of these small ones. That's just not a big deal. Okay, let me make another label for 10. Uh, so something else I really get enjoyed getting to do this past week was getting in and sharing with you my Supernatural fan art custom, um, <clears throat> which had just come in and I was, I, I couldn't unbox it fast enough. <laughs> and it, it was really fun because, how many times have I said fun in this weapon chat? Um, because whenever you get into fandom related things, it's wonderful to see the people that come out of the woodwork that are part of that same fandom. And that was just my favorite thing about putting that, <laughs> that unboxing up is I got to find out how so many of you are also Supernatural fans. And um, I hope that if any of you went over and, and contacted that artist to get permission to use that artwork for customs as well, that you love it as well. I, I have been on such a Supernatural kick lately and I have a couple other artists in mind that I wanna contact, but I, I can't, really nervous about how I am coming off to someone and how to phrase things. And I'm like, well, what if they don't know what diamond painting is? And I'm like, what is this chick saying? Is this a scam? Like what's going on? Um, but I've already found some other pieces that I would love to do as a diamond painting custom if the artist were to grant permission. So, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, it's just, it's fun, as, as one of the commenters on that video said, it's really fun to see your fandoms and your hobbies cross over. I feel like that's one of the reasons that there's this really big interest in Disney diamond paintings, um, and particularly for like Disney fan art, is because it's just the best when you can cross over uh, two interests, you know? So, Hopefully, maybe one of these days we'll we'll have some more options as far as Disney goes. But in the meantime, like I said, I was just thrilled to get to unbox that that custom, and I got to do it like above board and in an ethical way. <laughs> and I feel like I want to work on that immediately, like next month. <laughs> once maybe once I finish outside the sweet shop. Uh, maybe because in part I'm really going to need to have storage options. I may have to wait until then, but I I don't think I'm going to be able to wait very long. <laughs> uh, so even if you're not a Supernatural fan, I hope that, you know, you enjoyed that video if you happen to watch. But um, other fun things that are going on. So if you happen to be in Shay's live stream earlier today, Crafting with Shay, she makes really fabulous diamond painting content and has weekly lives on Sundays. And for a while has been talking about how she's been planning this diamond painting retreat with Kara, who's the principal painter, um, also fabulous content, wonderful person, and the diamond painting accountant, it's Alyssa, and she actually just started a YouTube channel. I'll do my very, very best to remember to link to both, uh, to all three of those gals channels below. Um, but the three of them have been planning and um, putting together this retreat in Texas for next year. And it's the first time that, that they're putting this particular retreat together and everything. And they opened up registration today and it did fill up <laughs> during the live, but they, they have a wait list. So if you're interested in potentially checking that out, um, go and check out Shay's live and um, 
you can totally join in on the wait list if you want. There's also a Diamond Painting Retreats Facebook group um, that, people, that, that people are really trying to get off the ground as a central place to um, learn about and know like what retreats are out there and happen. I've actually never been to one before and I am going to this one um, and do my very best to make it to this one. And I did offer to step in and help if they need some extra help with um, just sort of planning and organizing things. Those girls have definitely done the majority, like all the legwork so far, but um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes because it also is, it's been on my radar for a little while to try to get together a West Coast diamond painting retreat. I just don't have the time or the margin to do something like that right now. And I've never been to a retreat before, and I feel like that's a little bit putting the cart before the horse to, for me to head up planning and organizing a retreat on the West Coast when I, I haven't even been to one before to see see what the vibe is, see what I enjoy, see what you know I might want to incorporate. Um, and this is this is one way I know my limits. I know that I just I don't have the capacity for that right now. Um, maybe as my kids get older, I'll really have margin, uh, to head up something like that. But for the moment, yeah, maybe I'll just, I'll actually attend one and help out a little bit. <laughs> so, um, we'll see. I know that there's a, another diamond painting retreat happening this upcoming weekend. Um, I'm sure it's completely full and has been for a while, but which one's this weekend? Is it the Great Lakes one? I can't remember, but... Um, I've heard a lot of people talking about about going to that one. So travel safe if you're one of those if you're one of those going. Um, oops, let me just stab myself with a pen. Anyway, other things that are going on today is actually the day. Yeah, the day. I rather the day this is going up Monday. It's actually my wedding anniversary. Adam and I are celebrating 13 years today. Um, and I, I don't know, every year that goes by, <laughs> it's kind of like, wow, that's not a short amount of time to be married. Um, and I kind of have a similar reaction. I'm like, wow, 13 years is a long, 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 long time. Um, and so we actually went out yesterday evening saturday evening a friend of ours came over to watch our kids and <coughs> excuse me we went to downtown disney actually because we live pretty close to disneyland and Dis not downtown disney um, we decided to go there to go out to dinner we went to um that's a keto joe's it's the mexican restaurant in downtown disney and had just the most delicious food ever. We we got away kind of late, so we were eating at like 8.30 at night. I was so hungry. Um, we got the table side guac, which is was like the best decision ever. And I had remembered it from when we'd gone there with, um, I actually met up with some diamond painting friends at Downtown Disney a while back. Um, Yes, yeah, this was back when Kate was visiting in Jan January or February. And we had met up in downtown Disney with a couple other friends to, um, to, to hang out and just chat and stuff like that. And we ate at Taquito Joe's and had gotten the table side walk there. And they roll out this cart and they make it in front of you and they make it to your preference, like to your liking. So they literally, they cut and mash up the avocados in front of you and they're like, okay, we have all these topping options what would you like? Do you want it more um, like chunky or like creamy? And um, when Adam and I got it, I was like, this is perfect because this time we can get it like low spice level because my tolerance for spice is so, 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 so low. So we had to put the peppers on the side so Adam could add some in. Um, but it was just like the most delicious guac that I feel like I've had <laughs> in such a long time. It was so incredibly delicious. Um, and then I got a couple of tamales and Adam got fajitas. 
And we had plenty of leftovers of our entrees because we just completely filled up on the guac and chips because we were so hungry. And I was like, I know I shouldn't be eating so many of these because our real food's coming, but I'm so, 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 so hungry. So, um, but no, it was too delicious not to. <laughs> Uh, so that was our anniversary celebration and you know we just keep it really really low key um for our actual anniversary i think we'll probably do like a movie night and we're not going to try to go out on like a monday night um micah starts with summer school tomorrow and sorry this, this is zox band sometimes it itches okay so i i haven't mentioned like what these are in a really long time um but i often wear these in my videos this is from the brand zox um, they do these bracelets that I think they're made out of recycled, they're all made out of recycled plastic water bottles. And, um, I haven't bought any in a while, but I have kind of a collection and I'll often just grab one and wear them. And, um, uh, they, they'll have a print on the front. Sometimes they're like a limited run and sometimes they are just, you know, they're really in stock for a really long time. This one I bought a long time ago. I don't think it's on the website anymore, but then it's got, yeah, the artwork on one side and then it's got some kind of message or print on the flip side. This one says wild at heart. A lot of times it's like an encouraging or uplifting message. Um, this one is more, I just liked it because I had a fox. <laughs> I really like foxes. Um, and then it also has a number stitched in here and that is kind of hard to see. Um, is the number, like each, each bracelet has its own number. Anyway, I, I have a lot of these. They're really like cost effective and they make nice gifts and like meaningful gifts and stuff like that. Um, but every once in a while, sometimes the stitching on this part scratches at the inside of my wrist and I have some sensory <laughs> avoiding tendencies and sensitivities. So sometimes I'm like, mm, I can't really wear this one um, for long. But I was thinking, I was like, could I like use try to seal over it with something or try to, I don't know if clipping it would make it worse, but anyway, I, I'm not an affiliate for Zox. I just, I have a lot of their bracelets and they're fun to like wear and coordinate sometimes in, in my videos. Anyway, um, so I was talking about how we don't necessarily say stu stay up super late on a, mon on a Monday night because Micah is starting up with summer school this week and uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty early call time, wake time for him, um, which is good practice for kindergarten. I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned here a few times about how I'm a little bit nervous about how he's starting full day kinder in the fall. And that means that school starts at 7.50. And he he's going to be riding the bus to summer school. So he's even having to be ready to get out the door a little bit earlier. <laughs> Then, then, uh, then, um, then next year at least we're going to our homeschool and we can just walk. But um, yeah, so I don't want to be pulling a late night and then getting up at six forty-five in the morning. Getting up with Mike at six forty-five in the morning. But <clears throat> yeah, he's trying with summer school, which is good. I've been looking into. Um, I was looking at some local like VBS type programs for Connor because those are usually like really really low cost. Uh, but it looks like often those are evening programs and a lot of them don't seem to be happening until July. So um, I was kind of looking at some of the programs offered through the city because sometimes those they are not usually free, but they can be low cost sometimes too. And just a lot of them had filled up um, or the timing isn't quite right. And we did have kind of an additional wrench thrown in things this past week because on... Friday morning, I took Connor to the doctor's office. He was going on about two weeks of this really persistent cough that it was just a dry cough. But on Wednesday, it started to sound more like it was going into his lungs, sounding a little, I don't know, a little more concerning. And it was like, well, this has also been going on for two weeks. Okay, like let's let's go ahead and call and like make an appointment. So I called on Thursday, made an appointment for Friday. And then on Thursday night, he starts complaining about how his throat hurts, which I had been checking in with him a lot to, to see, does your throat hurt or are you just coughing? And he was, he would always say, no, I'm fine. Like my throat doesn't hurt. I feel fine. Um, and then Thursday started with my throat hurts. And then Friday morning, I was like, thank goodness I made the appointment. Cause then Friday morning, I see him doing the full body flinch whenever he swallows. And I was like, no. <laughs> and thank goodness we were 
Um, we already had the appointment, so I took him to the doctor's office. Thankfully, it was first thing in the morning, and I just said, I'm pretty sure he has strep. Like, it seems like strange, a little bit of strange timing because I had strep two weeks. I've been on antibiotics for 10 days at this point, and we've been really good about avoiding, you know, anything that would be spreading germs, blah, blah, blah. Um, was that right? Nope, that was supposed to be 21. Okay, so let's move this sticker or trash it if I can't peel it off very well. Okay, there we go. This is 21, not 22. Okay. Um, but then the, our, the pediatrician said that they've actually seen a really, really major spike in strep cases the past few weeks. And it's actually very strange because that's this isn't the time of year for strep at all, but they've seen a really, really big spike in them. Um, the past two to three weeks. So I, I don't know if Connor got it from me or picked it up somewhere else, but um, thank goodness we were able to get him started on antibiotics right away. Uh, he he had a really hard time with the strep swab. I felt so, 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 so bad for him. He has a really sensitive gag reflex, but we got through it. Um, and he perked right up after a day on antibiotics and with a little bit of Motrin to help, help his throat not hurt so bad and bring down, he had a really low grade fever. And as we're sitting in the pediatrician's office and he comes back in after like a minute after doing the strep swab, he's like, it's already positive. And I was like, of course it is. So he gives us the instructions and puts in the prescription and stuff. And I said, okay, so now this one, because I had Micah with me, pointed to Micah and said, you know, I feel like it's pretty decent odds that he's gonna end up getting it. Like he didn't catch it from me, but now Connor has it. Um, and I said, we're going into the weekend and I also mentioned to the pediatrician that as I'm saying this, I'm like, you know, Micah, he, he's autistic. Um, and the pediatrician just kind of like, you know, nodded. I was like, yeah, no, I guessed. Um, it's not in his file because to be fair, he doesn't have an official diagnosis yet, but we're, we're pretty confident. I mean, Connor has it um, and has an official diagnosis and Micah, like all of his yeah stuff at the school is like, services you know accommodations because of sisters behaviors consistent with an autism spectrum disorder um <clears throat> anyway so it doesn't matter i my point was that i was saying to the pediatrician i am concerned that the way that micah sort of experiences pain or the way that he communicates is going to prevent me from knowing if he has strep and strep can be really bad if it goes untreated uh so i was just asking for some advice for how to monitor Micah better for that sort of thing. So um, we we had talked about that and, you know, he just basically told me, he's like, if he gets sick over the weekend, go ahead and just, we'd give him the same antibiotic as Connor. So just give him like this dose from Connor's antibiotic and then call us on Monday and we won't make you come back in. We'll just call the pharmacy, call in a new prescription at the pharmacy and then there you go. You can just work from both. I was like, thank you. <laughs> so we were all squared away, but good news. Micah has continued to be basically a hundred percent himself, which is a hundred percent silly, stinker, sweet, <laughs> pure mischief and pure joy. Um, living his best summer life. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's having, he's having a good summer so far. Um, like I mentioned, I think last week the weather's really turned and been a lot warmer and he's just been really living outside in our, in our kiddie pool out, out back and loving splashing around and watering, watering the plants, which really was watering the weeds. I'm really proud of myself this evening. I had some energy, some motivation, and I actually went out back and it just, I don't know what happened. Um, because my mom and I just did like a ton of weeding and, and taking care of some of the issues back there, <laughs> um, with the plants out of control a month ago. Yeah. A month ago. And it just got completely overgrown all over again, almost worse in the past month. But I did go out there today to really try to bring it back under control. And I'm like, we're not watering besides Micah randomly pouring some, some water on a few of these spots. I'm not, it's not like I'm actively watering any of these weeds. Why are they just growing so freely and wildly? And I don't remember them doing this in past years. So I don't know. And with my kids playing out there all the time, I'm not really comfortable using like Roundup and stuff like that. 
Micah's just out there too much. I, I don't feel good about it. I'd rather pull things by hand as much as I can. And I'm sure there are some more natural ways to try to keep weeds at bay. And one of these days when I have the energy, I'll, t I'll dig into that a little bit more. But it's not this day. Um, yeah, <laughs> one of these days, one of these days. Um, what else is going on? So, oh, Connor's really been enjoying, this is fun. We've kind of made the transition into chapter books. He's, he had just turned eight. And did I talk about this last week? It wasn't in my Patreon vlog. Um, I regularly can't remember <laughs> necessarily like it, where I talk about things. So I apologize if I repeat myself often. Um, but yeah, Connor's kind of started enjoying chapter books more. He's always been a really big reader. Um, Micah is too, actually, which is, is really fun because Adam and I are both readers. I still do a lot of reading. Um, but Connor, I feel like, kind of finally made that transition to being like, okay, I think he's really old enough to start enjoying and being able to um, get into chapter books. So a ways back, I jumped the gun on this one. A ways back we had bought him, or it had been on his Christmas list. I think we got this, I'm pretty sure we got this as a gift from someone. Um, uh, the first four books in the Magic Treehouse series, which I remembered my brother really being into when I was growing up. And I was a little bit too old for them, but I did, I actually do remember still reading them anyway, because it was just, it was fun that there were a lot of them. Uh, but we got him, um, he had gotten rather, the box set of the first four. And we decided to pull those out and see, like we'll read a couple of chapters a night and see if he um, is into them and is able to kind of follow the plot and stuff from night to night. And he's loving it. Um, and he's been doing this for a few, at least a few weeks now. So maybe I have brought this up, but he finished the first four. And then last week, Adam, because it was our first full week of summer break, Adam took him to Barnes and Noble to look at some books. And they actually picked up the box set of five, six, seven, eight. Um, because Connor was like really wanting to be able to watch or to read more which I thought was really cute. <laughs> so he's been into those. I think he's on book. I think we just started book six. Um, and he reads two to three chapters a night. And yeah, no, he's into it. Um, and so that just makes my reader heart happy because I'm like, oh, he's getting into chapter books. Like he's he's made the transition. He's made the leap. And hopefully he's going to stay a reader. And Micah loves reading all the time. Just all the things all the time. And I try not to be that person that's always like, well, on my Patreon, this, or, or stuff like that. But I just wanted to, I wanted to mention, because maybe you guys will think this is cute, but um, occasionally I do these these pop-up lives for my Patreon where it's it's kind of really loosely planned, usually last minute. Where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go live, and it's just it's just for, for Patreon. Um, but what's been happening in those lives is that Micah often will bring over a book and he wants to read. And so I'll be like, okay, you guys, apparently it's time for story time with Micah. <laughs> and people are very charmed it's, and very sweet about it. Um, but Micah will just sit on my lap and we'll put the book in front of the camera and flip through it and, we'll, and he'll read it with me and we'll read it together. And the book of choice um, this past weekend was um, Nibbles the Book Monster. <laughs> This little monster that likes to eat books. <laughs> it was just really stinking adorable. Um, but yeah, Micah is quite, quite the reader. I think part of it probably comes from him being really speech delayed, but um, just in terms of his expressive speech, he uh, absorbs a lot and understands a lot. And reading was one of the sort of main ways that he could um, communicate and absorb and understand information. And that stuck with him even as his... His speech has really improved with speech therapy. I'm really thankful for speech therapy and the difference it's um, it's really made for him. <coughs> and we're seeing him definitely grow and learn a lot, which of course makes my mama heart really happy. Um, but yeah, it. I'm glad. I'm glad our kids our kids are both readers because I know that that's not always the case. And, you know, sometimes parents really wish their kids were more readers. And anyway, but 
that's kind of what's going on in the book world. In my book world, my reading world, I finally started the second book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Maas. Um, for the life of me, I actually can't remember the name of it. <laughs> I started with Throne of Glass because there's apparently some debate on which if you should, there's like a prequel book that she released later and most people say read later. So I didn't start with the prequel. I started with the Throne of Glass was the name of the, the first book. And it's also the name of the series. The second one is a Queen of Midnight. I think it might be Queen of Midnight. Crown of Midnight? I, you know what? I don't remember. A lot of these fantasy book titles, they all just they all just run together in my head. Um, but I finally started it. I, I'm listening to it as an audiobook, and I get it up to like 1.8 1. times 1.8 speed, like almost double speed, um, because then I can get through it faster. So I, I've had a little bit of a harder time getting into this series than I did with either of this author's other series, her two other series that she's done. This one I've struggled a lot more with getting into, but I've kind of heard, ah, oh, stink, I just, I went to try to level that out and I just shook diamonds everywhere. Um, I've heard that this series really picks up after you get a few books into it, so I'm sticking it out and trying not to be like, or I could watch something that I find more engaging or read something that I find more engaging because I really just want to reread the Court of Thorns and Roses series. <laughs> like, it's on my list to reread those, but I really want to, to get through this series first. And I also, I keep hearing about this book called Fourth Wing and have had so many people tell me and it keeps coming up too on like in my sort of suggested posts and um, that sort of thing. Fourth Wing. Um, I don't remember the, the author's name, but I really badly want to read that soon too. I mean, there's, there's dragons. And so it's like, well, I need to, I need to do that one soon too, but I want to get further into this series first. My goal is to finish the Throne of Glass series before that's not going to be enough space. Okay. We're just going to ignore that. Um, before Sarah J. Mass's next book, which is in a different series comes out in, um, January, early next year. So we'll see. Okay, this symbol's a little trickier to draw. <laughs> it looks so bad. And I'm gonna need two of them actually, because I'm gonna do two boxes. I'm gonna need another, I need another label sheet too. Okay. So that's what's what I'm currently reading and slash listening, because like I said, I'm doing audiobook form. And then I'm still in the midst of a supernatural rewatch. I kind of joke that I'm perpetually in the midst of a supernatural rewatch because I just, I'm always at some point in the series. And whenever I get to the end of it, I just start back over. And it's one of those that it's just like comfort food. I just come back to it really regularly and when I'm in the mood to. So I'm taking like a tiny bit of a break from it and trying to do more reading on my Throne of Glass series book. But when I go back to it, I'm not going to start back over from the beginning. I'm just going to pick back up where I left off. But yeah, I'm basically perpetually in a state of watching Supernatural. <laughs> um, and, and then the other thing I'm listening to is the Supernatural Then and Now podcast, which is a rewatch podcast that a couple of the guest stars from the show have been doing for the past couple of years. I think they're... Uh, a few episodes into season four at this point, which I'm like, that's when it gets really good. That's when my favorite character comes in, the character who is in the um, custom that I unboxed last week. So basically I'm just, now all I need to be doing is diamond painting that kit and I will just almost literally be sleep, eat, breathe, supernatural, everything. Uh, <laughs> no shame though. <laughs> You love what you love. That's what I love about fandoms in general is, um, and I feel like it's become more mainstream, more acceptable for people to be into things that, you know, being nerdy used to be a little bit more stigmatized. And I feel like now it's gone a lot more mainstream and the, the internet and stuff has just made it easier to connect with people that are your people and share the same interests. I mean, heck, look at diamond painting. <laughs> I made wonderful online friendships and connections with people and 
I don't even remotely feel <laughs> feel ashamed about talking about and just living diamond painting um, in so many aspects of of my my time and my day. Um, Thirty two. We're almost done, you guys. I was a little bit trying to drag it out, but that's okay. I think the timing worked out okay. <clears throat> as far as what's coming up this week, though, let's talk about what's coming up this week. Um, life stuff. So I guess that Micah's starting summer school. Um, I'm going to find some fun things to do with Connor while Micah's in, in summer school. It's not full days, um, but still a lot of the mornings. And then I also this week, I want to be more intentional about tracking things specifically i want to be tracking my headaches regularly so that i can um so that i can have a headache log to potentially take to my doctor if i feel like i might need to be on a daily preventative med or something like that and i just want to be able to come to her with okay here is the black and white on paper, how many times I've had headaches, how bad they were, what medication worked, what I think the triggers were, that sort of thing. So I just want to stay on top of that. I'm, it's, it's, I have a hard time with staying on top of this sort of thing. That's why I've never been able to get into using a planner with any reliability. It's just, it's not in my, it's not my nature <laughs> at all. Uh, but I also want to be up to date, uh, stay on top of tracking just like with our budget and stuff like that, as opposed to just like checking in every week or couple weeks. I just be, want to be really proactive and on top of it. So tracking things, that's kind of on my personal agenda for the week. And then um, filming after the kids go to bed, still kind of adjusting to having everything sort of look a little bit different during summer break with having the kids around though. Micah being in school might, a little circle there. Um, I might be able to get some done in the mornings <clears throat> because Connor can be pretty quiet and chill, but um, it's still trying to be inten intentional again about how I'm using my time and still having time to diamond paint in the evenings because I'm having a hard time getting really like any good chunks of diamond painting done during the day because Micah's just he's it's very sweet he's very interactive and wants to play a lot we've actually been doing a lot with having um, I picked up like some activity books and, like coloring books for him because he's been really into that sort of thing lately so I'm completely like of course that's my priority I'm happy to do those kinds of things with him during the day, but it's like, okay, then my evenings become both like, let's film and edit and upload. And also this is my good time to diamond paint on an inter blah, blah, blah. So, um, and also that's when I want to spend time with Adam. So it's just, yeah, being deliberate. Um, but I, I have some videos, fun videos coming out this week. There should be a sneak peek. Um, I will have a summer with a master's video this weekend. Maybe I will get another small shop haul up so that I'm not getting super behind on those. And then let's see, the end of the month is on Friday. I'm looking at my calendar. So I'll have a month in review video. I don't know if that'll go up before or after next week's whip and chat. Maybe after. We'll see. We'll see how filming goes. But yeah, unboxings, lots of stuff going on. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for all of that. But we are all kitted up and ready to go, you guys. Um, most of the lids actually didn't seem to be too warped. It was kind of one of those first two that had some issues, but the others seemed to snap into place okay. But it'll be, you know, it'll be nice to work out of something different and challenge myself a little bit. A small enough kit that everything fit really easily into these. There were just a couple of colors that I went ahead and did two boxes for. But... I don't think I did too bad with writing out the symbols. <laughs> Here's the legend that I'm working off of. Obviously, they're not color coordinated, but I think that'll be okay. I don't think there were any that were too similar. Here's that canvas again, in case you didn't watch that summer with the master's video where I unboxed it. Um, the artwork's really impressionistic, so we'll see if the really kind of blurred rendering works. It's also a crop of the original artwork, I realized when I was looking at it. And yeah, there's no branding. There doesn't even say mark, make market on the canvas. It just has this like unit number and then the title. But I don't know. Otherwise, it's 
It's this polyester material. <laughs> and I'm curious to see, yeah, you got like the red printing. I think that it is a Diamond Dots parent company canvas. A little saturated, a little oversaturated. But yeah, I might get started on this one tonight or maybe not because I have to pick out matching accessories. I might pull back out um, outside the sweet shop and get a little time on that as well instead. But anyway, thanks for hanging out with me while we did a little kit up and chat. I know it's a little different from a regular whip and chat where you actually get to see me diamond painting, but I hope it was still enjoyable to get to hang out and um, see me try out a new storage system and, and process for kidding up. Um, there, You know, there's really any number of ways you can make it work for you. You don't have to have, you know, just kits that are from companies that have sticker sheets. You know, there's there's plenty of ways to try to, to, to make it work for you. So anyway, if you made it all the way to the end, how about, uh, isn't there like a dancer or ballerina emoji or two? There's like the twin, the the twinning dancing emoji. There's, there's a few different like dancing related emojis. There's like the classic, you know, chick in the red dress doing the dance some kind of dancing emoji in honor of the dance class kit and stay tuned of course i'm going to do a review with you guys once i finish this one um but yeah i'm i'll get started on it soon <laughs> let me know what you think as far as next month for summer with the masters um would you rather see me work on the paint gem mini set that had the little mini versions of all these old masters kits i unboxed it last week it was the museum edition um either that mini set or the primrose Alphonse Mucha panel from Distracted by Diamonds. It's real long and skinny. It's got round diamonds. It's got really, really pretty, pretty colors. <laughs> the, the, the subject in it has, is doing this like little booty tooch thing. That's really cute too. <laughs> um, beautiful artwork. And I'm just debating. It's like, do I want to just do like a smaller set of projects or do I want to go ahead and get one of these larger old master's kits out of my stash this summer, as opposed to just only really getting these littler kits out of my stash. So anyway, let me know what you think and uh, let me know how you're doing and what you were working on in this whip and chat. So I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you'll probably like it here. I do these whip and chats each week. Usually I'm working on a diamond painting and not just kidding one up, but this is just, this is how it worked out this week. I hope you enjoyed anyway. Thanks for watching you guys. I hope you have an amazing, amazing start to your week and I'll chat with you in the next one. Bye.